Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and Feed Up Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> and we're back today to review some products. First thing I've got I picked up this week is a Draggy car performance tester. Now, if you haven't seen one of these before, it works via GPS. It allows me to check the uh, zero to 60 quarter mile times, et cetera, et cetera, on vehicles. And I figure what better way to test it on Ruby. I got a second product here that's provided to me by the reseller. And uh, this is a Ferrosla vacuum cleaner for your automobile. So we'll be reviewing that later in this video too. But the first thing we want to cover that you guys have been waiting for is this right here, the Draggy. Now inside of this box, there's a little sleeve, and you'll see a little, which looks like a USB thumbstick. It's actually a little bit bigger than that. This little device here actually picks up the GPS satellites and then sends the data to your phone via Bluetooth, where it then calculates and figures out exactly how fast you're going and what distance you've covered in what period of time. And of course, then it calculates everything else that you need to know as far as your race data is concerned. Inside of this box, there's another piece of cardboard. You got your charging cable, and you've got your instruction manual. And there's also two little magnets, which I just dropped on the ground. <laughs> two of these guys that allow you to stick it to your dashboard and then magnetically click that onto place. So that way you can have it sitting on your dash if your dash is not metal for some reason. Ruby's isn't, Volkswagen Beetles typically are, so is bus. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually just gonna stick it up on the hood. Anyways, Ruby's gonna be the test. People keep telling me there's no way that could possibly be a 1600 engine in there because it goes just too fast. Well, let's see. I've been told 1600 Beetle engine, in a Beetle, of course, fastback data is a little harder to find, but stock, they, they went anywhere between about 22 seconds and 30 seconds on the quarter mile off the factory floor. And I think that's a pretty wide gap, but unfortunately there's no factory showroom cars left anymore. They haven't made any since forever. So we also do know that this is kind of a tough comparison because Ruby here is a fastback and weighs significantly more than that of a Beetle. So that's going to handicap the performance a little bit. So we'll see how exactly that turns out. Anyways, licky, likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. And check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. Thanks, you guys. We'll be back right after the intro. There's not too much to this little device. The instructions that came with it were just kind of awful, but it's magnetic. Stick it to your dash or your hood or your roof, wherever you can get a clear view of the satellites without it being inside the car, because of course your roof being tin will probably block the signal. You then go ahead and you install the Draggy app. Once that fires on up there, it should look just like that. If your Bluetooth is enabled, it will immediately connect to the device. That's it, it's connected. The little device will start flashing, which of course you can't see it's because it's sitting in the sunlight. It will update the satellite data sending off to it. You can cancel it if you want to. And then uh, once that is complete, it will then say it's ready. At that point, you are ready to start moving. Just go, it does the rest. There's really not much else to it. If you want to record a video, you hit the record button. Here it is. And what I did is I just rubber banded this phone to my uh, rear view mirror. It actually did a pretty good job allowing the camera to stick off to the left side of it. And then you hit the record button. And again, once you start rolling, this thing starts immediately timing you and starts giving you results. Well, anyway, without carrying on anymore, let's go ahead and set a baseline. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a run in my dad's CRV. That's right, because I was out of town last week and I was testing the product. So I decided to um, see what dad's CRV did with it to set a proper baseline. All right, we're going to make three simple rules on this. First one is we're going to have three attempts. Second rule is the best time that we have out of those three attempts is going to be the winner. And the last rule is I'm only going to go, of course, when it's safe. <laughs> so we're going to look around. I'm not going to be competing or racing with any other cars. And if anybody's going to be in the way, it's going to affect my time. So I'm only going to go, of course, when the coast is clear. Anyways, onwards. Here we go. There's Dad's 2011 2.4 liter Honda CRV. Should have a similar engine into it that my Acura RSX Type S used to have, but it has a different tune on it. That only had a 2 liter, this has a 2.4, which has a longer stroke, and it doesn't have the same performance head on it. So I don't know what to expect from this. Um, I've driven it before, it goes pretty good, but I don't think it's fast. <laughs> Guess we'll see. I think we'll stick them right here. It's got a good clear view to the sky and I can see it from the driver's seat. Oh. 
off. Here we go. 30. This here is my 2005 350Z. Makes approximately 300 horsepower, but it isn't gonna get any grippings. I was gonna slip this sucker in as a little video in between you guys, but this storm just started kicking up. And I don't have enough time to be able to edit this video to be able to get the uh, video up for you guys on Wednesday morning. I don't know if you caught that on the video here, but we just had a huge lightning bolt right over there. There it is. So. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get a very safe quarter mile time <laughs> taking this sucker out on these wet roads. Although if I'm feeling froggy, maybe we'll do it anyway. Just one pass, one pass. Maybe we'll give it a shot and just see. Because I already know that uh, this thing is, is, is just extremely slippery in the rain. Even with good tires on it, it's still, it's, uh, it's just naturally slippery. It's just, it's inherently built that way, I guess. Woohoo! More lightning. There it comes. It's going to be loud. And there you go, there's our little intermission. At the same time, guys, I was also going to review the Ferrocilla vacuum cleaner, but I can't do anything with that right now because the manufacturer of the product told me they're out of stock. So they didn't want me advertising something that they can't sell at the moment. So this is a little cutaway that I'm putting in the middle of the video that's covering up for the part that's missing. So uh, you won't see that in this video. So thanks you guys for watching that one anyway. But um, man, see if we can get some more lightning here. This is a... Uh, it's gonna be good. This storm is it's coming in hard. Still to this day, have not caught a good bolt of lightning on camera yet. Usually just little flashes off in the distance, but never actually get a good one. So cross your fingers, maybe I'll get a good one for you guys. There it is, finally got one. The storm is actually blowing north right now, so maybe we'll catch another one off that direction. This time in the summer, you can almost set your clock by them. Well, I can't really say that. It's anytime between 3 and 7 p.m. usually get a storm, and sometimes they last all the way from 3 to 7 p.m. But the wind is kicking right now. I mean, it is just throwing the rain. You can see it's blowing, blowing to the north. Right across the roofs of the houses. Boom, boom. All right. Well, that smoke is getting worse. Something's definitely burning over there. I'm gonna send him a message. I, I've got his phone number. I'll text him and see what he's got burning over there. Well, that's a surprise. I have to look it up. The hood may not be steel. It might be aluminum. I had no idea. That seems to be good and solid right there, though. We'll go with that. All right, changed my mind.
what did we learn today? We learned that the CRV is very, very consistent in its times, right about 18 seconds flat. I mean, barely over that, 18 seconds, two tenths of a second slower when the AC was turned on, and uh, that made a heck of a difference. The Z, on the other hand, um, the roads were wet. I, I wasn't driving the car as aggressively as I should have. I was bouncing off the rev limiter, and it just, I think I got 14.85 seconds, and I'm expecting more like mid-13s, maybe low-13s if I really pushed it hard and, and I learned the car a little better. Drag racing is something that I've never really done before. I've always gone around a, like a rally dirt tracks. Uh, I have a lot of fun on that, go-kart kind of stuff. That, that's me, tight turns, yeah. Drift, drifting and tight, yeah. That's it, not so much drag racing. Drag racing is still kind of a new thing to me. Um, I think with a little more experience and a nice dry road, uh, I can get the times on this car a whole lot better. As far as the Volkswagen is concerned, pretty much the results of what I was expecting. I got pretty close to what people would consider a stock engine to have gone for that of a Beetle. Now, of course, it's a fastback and uh, it's heavier, but it's still getting about the same times as that of a fast stock Beetle. So I, I think I think it's stock, pretty much stock. That car needs a little bit of a tune also, and I think if I tighten up the tune on the engine and I put a tachometer on it so I know when to properly shift rather than just going by my ear and having um, probably a few dozen more test runs, I think I can shave off about a second, maybe a second and a half off of that car. Um, it was just a lot of little things that were pushing the time off on it, being that the car is not that fast. You think, you know, one and a half seconds is a very small percentage of 22 seconds, so I, I think that's very doable. Anyways, I learned a lot today. The Draggy is just a really useful tool. If you haven't gotten one, maybe you want to get one yourself, go down below in the video description, find the link to it, click it, purchase it up there on Amazon. I think I get about $1.50 or 2 bucks or something like that if you guys make the purchase. So if you buy one there, you're supporting me at the same time. And I'd like to see your time, especially if you have an air-cooled Volkswagen, especially a stock one. I want to see what you guys are doing. So um, please, purchase one down below. And also the Ferrocilla vacuum cleaner. Unfortunately, we didn't get to talk about it in this video. I had to hack and wag this video from a whole bunch of different clips from all different places. I was in Pensacola, I was in Fort Myers. I was just all over the place. I just could not get the video done. Finally, I edited something together with just junk that I found to be able to put it together to make it work. And this is the best I could come up with. So I hope you guys like it. You know, please give me that thumbs up. Please comment down below. Please subscribe and check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. Uh, people this week, I don't know why, but for some reason this week, more than ever, people are asking me, how do I find your other social media? I can't find your Facebook or your Instagram. Or, I don't know why it's so hard. Really, it's it's on DuckShit.net. I say it in every video. It's also down below in my video description. If you're not using the tools that are available to you, that's why you're not finding me. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. As always, we'll see you next time.